If you're here looking for a Byzantium guide, that's too bad, because I intentionally didn't watch or look at anything to do with the new Byzantium. I read the dev diary several months ago. After that, never checked. Didn't watch any guides, didn't watch any videos. In my opinion, the best way to play Byzantium is to experience the suffering firsthand, so there's gonna be a lot of figuring things out. I will still play Iron Man, even though I uh, definitely do not expect to uh, do this with zero restarts. Come on, knights, please. Knights, if we use your ships, we might have a chance. Knights, hello? No, never mind. Okay, cool. I mean, not cool. This kind of sucks, but okay. Things, uh, things are not looking great. Surprise, this is the second attempt already. Yippee. Okay, as early as we can, let's declare war. Seriously, you allied the knights that quickly? Dude, this sucks. Uh, okay, well, I guess that's life. Who really knows how this is going to turn out? Oh, that's how it turns out. Okay, time to go to, uh, take three. Okay, they're trying to fight us on the mountains. Uh, that's not great for them, but it might be okay for us. Maybe. If Skanderbag didn't run away, never mind. I don't know what attempt this is at this point. There's a fairly decent chance you probably just watched me fail three or four times in a row. And so after that, I decided decided to sit down and actually devise some kind of a plan. I even got out the pen and paper, alright, I made sure I wrote it down so that I could do it again if it actually worked. And it did, I even made a tweet about it, so if it works a second time, that'll be great. So that being said, let's begin. I'm gonna improve relations with the knights, because there's a decent chance if you improve their relations, they will improve back with you. Then we're going to improve relations with Albania, and I'm going to insult some rival of the Pope, probably Provence, they're kind of like the least in the way here. We're gonna seize land, hand out all the point privileges, which might seem like a bad idea, and that's sort of because it is. Uh, I just like having points. That's kind of it. I'll also take increased levies and supremacy over the crown, and I'm gonna leave one spot for strong duchies, because I'm going to need that pretty soon. As well, I'm going to go with the general because I want to save a lot of mill points. Also, I will take expansionist zealotry and I'll also take development of temples. I want that. Yeah, I want that kind of. As for these guys down here, we're going to go with this and also the two privileges that give me a ship. That's this one, and an admiral, which is this one. There's some stuff I want to do with developing Morea, so that's why I want to save as many points as possible. Uh, plus, getting that early tech with the Ottomans means I do want to pick up the mill power, and also I want an advisor in every possible category, so that's morale of armies. Plus, we'll get the... Uh, we'll go with Diplo Rep, that's fine. And I suppose national tax. I'm also going to get rid of this fort because we frankly don't need it, and I'm going to hire a free company, but I will take out a few loans because uh, I do still kind of want some galleys. Well, first let's do this. Take that and that, and they won't let me do the thing because they don't have the loyalty. That's great. Okay, let's do this then. Just means I made a bit of a mistake, and we're not going to get that first ship for a little bit, but that's uh, that's kind of okay. And I think that's it. Really? It, hold on a second. Wait, it's been two months. It's been two months. Uh, we'll see what we can do about that. Okay, uh, RNG is not in our favor today. We're gonna have to try again. Wonderful. Oh look, another restart. I just did the exact same thing as I did last time, uh, except I pressed the buttons in the correct order. So now we do have our heavy ship being built. Okay, same as before with Epirus. When it comes to this option, we're going to stand by our decision. We're going to uh, remain open to the west. One, because it gives you, frankly, an unreasonable amount of manpower during the Ottoman War, I find. And also because we want the Pope to be friendly with us. We managed to take Epirus down fairly early. We don't really want to uh, fight all of their ships, so we'll just go ahead and take our core, vassalize, full money, force religion, rivalry, and their core. That's good enough. But now that we have two subjects, we can also throw on strong duchies. Okay, whatever. We can grab the knights. That works. Surprisingly, they didn't raid me, which is like the first time out of every recorded and unrecorded attempt of playing this, that they didn't raid me immediately. So that's interesting. Even if they do, you can kind of just like bump up their opinion a little bit. And if you do that enough, they might start raising your opinion of them. And then sometimes you still get the alliance. Okay, hey, Georgia, do you like really not want Ottoman land? Like not even a little bit? Damn. Okay, well, maybe not Georgia this time then. We'll go with Trebizond, that's fine. Because Trebizond actually would help. So actually, instead, uh, we don't need Georgia. We will get rid of Georgia. Let's also go ahead and insult someone random. Like, I don't know, you know what? Uh, you wouldn't be bad to insult. Gives us more opinion with 
Serbia. Okay, anyway, uh, we're not going to go with the top option. That's way too much military power. We're going to go for the bottom option. There might be one way to get Pope to like me. It's like not going to be great, but uh, we do have to develop a little bit anyway. So let's go ahead and grab that edict and we're going to develop two mill points in here. Only two mill points. That's it. No more than that. The reason is for the Hexamillion wall, which we're not going to take the top option uh, because I, I deleted that for for a reason. <laughs> we're not going to reconstruct it. It's fine. Instead, we'll take the bottom option, which uh, frankly, I'm not going to use either, but I like having that option. So we're going to take it. Anyway, as for the other development, I do want to get Morea up to... 30 for this and this also to a degree but it's like not nearly as important as this so we're gonna dev this up to 10 we're gonna dev this up to 10 as well not using mill power just everything else and then eventually when we have the points we'll also develop Achaia Serbia will ally us though and that's perfect because Serbia gives us money it's just free cash baby so we're gonna go up here uh click on this mission which we were waiting for Serbia to ally us for and I'm gonna take the top option because the other options are frankly a little bit cringe this might be useful for winning the siege war. Uh, I did lose the siege war the first time I tried this strategy, but in the end I still won the actual war, so I don't think it's that important really. Instead, I would very much like to have some money. Last time, Serbia paid me like 50 ducats. Okay, 200 opinion Pope. They are still not friendly towards me. Um, this might sound a little bit conspiracy theory-ish, but I'm wondering if it's literally just a bug at that point. So I am going to just like quickly reload the game. Never mind. It wasn't a glitch. They just hate me. That's cool. I think what we do is uh, we ball. We play anyway. It doesn't even matter. Because uh, what we're going to do is take out a few loans. And I kind of want to start the war with the Ottomans soon anyway, because they are currently at war over here so yeah we're gonna do that a part of me does wonder if like if i just like hire one merc stack maybe they'll like me so i'm gonna take the cheapest one. Oh, we just got a ridiculous amount of money from serbia sheesh <laughs> i didn't even realize i forgot it doesn't give you like a pop-up or anything it's just like here you go here's some money <laughs> okay pope i will hire mercenaries please like me i am stronger now i promise also I have uh, a big ship. Why do you hate me? Okay, hold on. Um, let me see if I can do something really quickly. This is like a terrible idea. Really bad use of money, but uh, I really don't have a lot of options. So I'm going to try something. Okay, diplomatic reputation. Perfect. Yes, alliance. Thank you. That took way too long. Okay, we'll grab that and we'll grab this, which gives us the Diplo power because we didn't invade them. But it does mean that we have cheaper mercenaries, which means we're going to hire a third, probably not fourth, but maybe if I have to stack, uh, we'll go with this guy, I guess. And now that we've hired three mercenary companies, we also get another minus 10% merc cost and 5% mercenary discipline. Surprisingly, we are going to be stacking quite a lot of discipline. But anyway, I think everything is ready to declare war on the Ottomans. I do like to fight them early, because if you wait too long, then they snowball really quickly. Okay, so priority number one is uh, no longer the same as it used to be. It used to be, uh, you know, send your ships to Galibalu, barrage it, assault it, so the Ottomans can't cross. That's no longer really the strat. Unless you get rid of this thing, you have minus 75% assault fort ability. That's really not great, so we're going to avoid assaulting forts as much as possible we're gonna have to win fair and square i know boring right on the bright side we do have somebody in the east to serve as a distraction for the ottomans on top of the fact that they're fighting another war so this is great for us this is the prime opportunity they're already losing manpower by overstacking in typical ottoman fashion and they're going to prioritize getting trebizond out as well because well they're all alone that leaves us plenty of time to siege selenik oh also you get like a ton of these all throughout the war you're gonna get like thousands of manpower tons of ducats in my opinion, uh, maybe it's a little bit too much manpower, but the money is great. I love the money. Also, during this war, I'm probably going to improve relations with Austria because the last time I tried this, they did want to ally me after that, and that's great. Okay, what can we do here? Morale of armies is not a bad idea. Where did the Ottomans get 25% morale from? Sheesh. But, oh, but that's stability, though. Our leader's going to die pretty soon, right? He's 55 years old. That gives him at most, like, 10 years. Oh, that would save me a lot of admin. Kind of want that stability. Yeah, I'm gonna take that. Giovanni Justinian the man and the legend himself if you want to learn more about this guy there's like a documentary that may or may not still be on netflix that i don't know what it's called anymore uh really interesting stuff uh oh okay the ottomans are done with that <laughs> okay that's not good um a decent chance they might actually try to attack us here now so uh we're gonna move off that's not worth sieging like that <laughs> what do you know okay uh we're also not gonna siege that it's not worth it what we should do is scorch this and scorch that just wait for them to come to us okay let me grab this the ad 
admin point here, which means I can consecrate the Metropolitan. That'll allow us to finish this, but we're not going to touch it yet. Because if we do this and the Renaissance hasn't spawned, it doesn't do anything. At least I'm pretty sure. And I'm not willing to test it. Also, that gets us a little bit closer to being able to grab uh, the icon of St. Michael. If we get an event, that'll be really nice. By the Clericoi, I was supposed to take the one which allows you to spend legitimacy and prestige to instantly get 5% uh, Patriarch Authority. And I didn't do that. So we're going to have to wait like another two years, I think, in order to do that. But uh, hey, that's life. Right now, what we're going to do is take this Discipline guy because we really do need Discipline and more mill points. And since the Ottomans have taken Tech 4, we actually can't fight them right now. In fact, I would go so far as to say uh, we should move these guys as well. And what we should do actually is this. Demand 100 ducats of payment. We're already at war. They're not going to pay us. So we can just send the Pretender Rebel inside. <laughs> they actually paid the Tribune? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's good. Okay, now we get to the point where we kind of have to uh, bait the Ottomans a little bit. The way we're going to do that is by sending a small little defenseless stack up here just by itself. Totally not there for you to intentionally attack. Come on, buddy. Oh, you don't want to attack them? That's weird. What, not even a little bit? We're both getting comparatively fairly lucky on our respective sieges, which is, you know, not a great thing to be honest, but uh, hey, if we manage to win the siege race, then we should be able to win the war. Even if we don't, the Ottomans are likely gonna lose a lot of people here. Uh, they have very little manpower. And I'm gonna take the next tech. Ooh, disease outbreak, that's pretty unlucky. They get a wall breach? Come on. I get a disease outbreak, they get a wall breach. If I had a nickel for every time the Ottomans won a siege race that should be impossible for them, uh, I would have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. You know, uh, no blockade, no cannons, with uh, more defensiveness to fight against on a higher level fort. Luck does not even begin to describe that. Okay, so once the Ottomans take on Constantinople, you are left with two options. You can just sort of like surrender, which uh, you, you shouldn't do that. Or you could do this one, which is good because you get morale damage received decrease, which is fantastic. All of this is to prove to you that it's not actually over yet. We're fine because this is like the same thing that happened the first time to me. So we're going to take a little rest, do a little bit of looting, and I think we will be okay. All right, they want to fight me on the mountains. We don't quite quite have the tech for that yet. Is it worth the fight? I'm gonna say no. Okay, we're gonna do what I like to call a little bit of trolling, where we go back and forth. Uh, the Ottomans can't cross here, so they're gonna walk around, then we just go up north, and then, you know, we back off a little bit until we reach tech four, and then we can bait them, bait them into a fight. Particularly this guy, I really want to fight that stack, but alas, it's not the time yet. We're gonna go ahead and scorch that, make sure he can't cross, and we're gonna go back and forth just to do a little bit of trolling. All we have to do is make sure that there's like one cog there, so I'm just gonna put him right there, and then we go back again. I'm sure they're very upset at this point. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now what? Uh, you know what? Just take the prestige. I don't even care that much. Look, the whole time the Ottomans are walking around with a 29k stack, kicking loads of attrition. Look at their manpower, 7,000. That's not a lot. Plus, we can take the next tech. Perfect. And give it a month or two, we should also be able to get 10% discipline. Actually, you know what we should do? Uh, we're gonna go north. That's what we're going to do. We're gonna wait for this guy to lock in in Athens, and then we're just gonna go right up there. He thinks he's gonna do something. He thinks he's cooking. Where are you going? That's interesting. Hmm. Let's let him move for a little bit, see where he's going. Oh, he's going up north to a... This is perfect. Oh, that this is great. This is amazing. Hold on. Okay, Albania's on low, which is kind of a problem. Uh, We do need to go up there and beat up the Ottomans before Albania drops all the way down. So we're going to give this a shot. Maybe it's not a great idea, but we do have pretty much the entire army at this point. It looks like we have 20,000 men. We actually have 28,000 men. So hopefully that's going to be enough. Yeah, tragically, we are at 9.9 .9 Patriarch Authority and we need 10 to pick up the icon of St. Michael. So we're fighting this battle without the discipline we need. Even though we have fewer men, we are nominally causing more casualties until that last roll there. Now it's looking pretty bad for us. Okay, let's leave. They lost about 14, no, sorry, 12,000 men, and we lost about seven. So that's not terrible. Could be a lot worse. Plus, Albania is back in the game, which is good. Well, they were back in the game. This guy just moved back up here, so who knows? Hey, Skanderbeg, if we can hold out for one more year, my good sir, we should be able to beat the Ottomans. Not even a year, actually. It's like six months. A gift from Hungary, though, that is good. Thank you. That's very nice. Okay, here's what we're going to do with that gift. We're going to build one more stack of mercenaries temporarily. Just may not look like much, but we actually have like 33,000 men here. Hopefully this time uh, things might go a little bit better. Actually, there might be another option. If we go over and around, if they'll let us just like squeak by, attacking this 5k would be so much better. Let's give ourselves until the next repair tick and let's give it a shot. Oh, that's beautiful. That's really nice. The Ottomans want to try 
But it's gonna be too late. It's too late for you. <laughs> you fool. You clown. I didn't even get to use my special move yet. Okay, let's repair all the stacks. I think we should be good to fight this. Hopefully. I actually have no idea. 30,000 men. Not a lot of morale, but we are fighting on mountains with a crossing. This is beautiful. Even if we lose, we're still inflicting a ton of casualties onto them. Casualties which they can't recover because they don't have manpower. I do. They do not. And they've also taken out a bunch of loans already. Ottomans. Five loans. We've taken out a lot of loans as well, but I'm tiny so that makes sense. They're big. This is uh, entirely their fault, actually. You want peace? Yeah, I don't think so. Sorry. Thank you for the money. I appreciate that. You might think, hey, don't you want to like go and repair a whole bunch? Nope, we're going right back out. Well, not immediately. Give it like one second or two or whatever. Actually, it's really interesting. Like, do you want to fight me? Okay, that's what I thought. I was, <laughs> was going to say, that's a terrible idea. I don't know why you would do that. Here, give me two more months. I'll pick up the 10% discipline, then wipe this stack and then move north. That shouldn't be an issue at all. We are losing a ridiculous amount of money, though, so I am going to get rid of one of these companies. Probably whoever has the fewest men available and isn't the first company. So like, yeah, we'll get rid of this dude, I think. Okay, only losing 17 dockets a month. Great. <laughs> Before he even has the chance to react, we're just gonna walk in there, increase our morale, recover a few men. We have 10% patriarch authority so we can grab the icon of St. Michael. And you know what? We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna double that because we click this mission over here. Double the modifier for the currently selected icon for 15 years. That means 10% discipline. On top of the fact that we also have this discipline guy, it means we have 115% uh, discipline. Highest discipline, Miltech for this guy stands zero chance. Like, it's almost embarrassing, actually. Discipline should be enough. There we go. The Ottomans are down to 18,000 men. That's not very many. And we, ourselves, the Alliance, we have a lot more than that, don't we? Everybody's willing to fight. Albania, my vassals, of course. The Knights are good to go. We're good to go. It doesn't look like we are, but we're definitely fine still. War exhaustion. Pff, never heard of it. Ooh, a new stack to fight. Come on, don't be like this. Come back here. You want a white piece? <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's funny. Okay, um, let's wipe this stack as well. Oh, he's just digging his grave further and further. Is that really the way you want to go? Bankruptcy is looming though. Kind of a problem. We have about like a year to solve this issue. Uh, it's okay. I'm going to delete one of my stacks and then get some of my land back. It'll be fine. All right, let's hope for a wipe, please. No wipe? Seriously? Uh, let me go ahead and delete one of my stacks like this one. We don't need that. And we're going to go resiege my country. Also, we can't afford you anymore, so we're just going to get rid of that. <laughs> All right, and the Renaissance did spawn, so you know what I should do? I should click on uh, this button right here. Here for renaissance and i should also click this to make people happy the thing about the renaissance though is like we don't get a whole lot of the renaissance uh tragically so i'm still gonna develop it like just a touch just a tiny little bit get it to spawn in one province it'll spread to the others fairly quickly also we can sell titles which doesn't seem like it's a great idea but uh we we kind of need money so as soon as I take back Constantinople, I will be doing that. Okay, let's get Athens to do that for us. We'll get you to allow attach. Try and get as many people as possible to uh, help us out over here, because that's kind of a problem. We, uh, hmm, I want to fight that guy a little bit, but only only like a touch, you know? Actually, no, I do want to fight him. I want to fight him a lot. Okay, well, in the end, we still managed to... Whoa, you got you got more people from... Did you just hire a stack right there? Okay, that's not a bad strategy, actually. That's, that's kind of impressive. Okay, this guy definitely got a little bit too cocky. Hopefully, we can knock him out of the war this way. Okay, don't forget, buddy, you're still tech three. Okay, Again with this guy as well. Got to knock that out. That's scorched. So that was a bad idea for them to do that. Us, you're locked in. Why would you do that? You're so... Why? Okay, it's fine. We get to win. Okay, maybe a wipe this time, please. Thank you. Okay, let's get your ally out of this war. Finally. Let's actually delete you as well. Excellent. Okay, so we have the war gold back. The Ottomans are down to 7,000 men. We still have many more. Maybe... Uh, yeah, bankruptcy. Okay, well, maybe we can finish this off anyway. I don't know if I should be happy for this. You know what? I think I, think I should be happy for this. Because they can siege that for me. I can do other things. You want peace? Sure. Okay, now let's go ahead and get rid of all the advisors because we really can't afford them. We're on money saving mode now, finally. <laughs> oh, this is a wonderful thing to have. Okay, uh, we can't afford to take the top option. People can simply die. Uh, we can't save them. Okay, yeah, we can now have 28 loans and we have 22, so bankruptcy is no longer looming. And we're just gonna like really quickly uh, wipe out the rest of the Ottoman army if we can. That would be lovely. Everybody help me, please. That would be really great if you would do that. Thank you. Okay, beautiful. All right, let's get everybody. Uh, we're gonna go and attack this. That's my capital. I'll be taking that back. Thank you. And the Mamluks have declared a war. Why? Why would you do this to me? Come on. I wanted a 100%. Ah, uh, I think this game hates me, actually. I have the opposite of streamer luck. I have streamer elves. And the knights are gone. That's a surprising white piece. Why would you white piece? That belongs to me. 
Thank you. But even the Mamluks are starting to siege that. Ah, we put in all the effort. The AI exploits us, of course. We fight the Ottomans down to literally no manpower. And the Mamluks are like, thanks, bro. Don't mind if I, uh, don't mind if I do. Unbelievable. Disrespectful. I can't believe this. Well, nonetheless, we have stuff to take care of, like sieging this as well. And we need to siege this, obviously. And we have call for peace. Of course we do. <laughs> That's great. Okay, so I can't grab either of these forts uh, unless the Mamluks decide to peace out. You know, maybe. Maybe they would. Uh, I don't think it matters because I, I don't think they're going to and we have call for peace so um that kind of sucks uh we're not gonna grab either of these provinces tragically because we we literally can't do that but uh what i could do is maybe grab most of my cores i could grab a derne even though i usually don't like taking a derne i would have to take like all of this connect up my country and also to get the most uh, i can out of this peace deal so this is probably what it's going to look like i don't like it but Hey, that's, uh, that's life sometimes, I guess. Things don't always work out in your favor, and when they don't, um, you just gotta move on. Well, that's 100%. I guess that's it. On top of that, we are going to get 784 ducats, which, hey, that's not that bad. Now, that was definitely one of the toughest wars I've ever fought. Speaking of wars, thank you to War Thunder for being the sponsor of today's video. War Thunder is a game which needs no introduction. If you have an internet connection, there's a good chance you've already heard of it. With over 2,000 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships, War Thunder is the most detailed, immersive, and comprehensive dynamic vehicle combat game to date. Whether you prefer realism or straight action, War Thunder delivers intense PvP combat that suits your playstyle. I used to play mostly on console, but even on Steam, I have over 20 hours in it. Mostly, I like to play close air support so I can knock out enemy anti-air. I mean, I'm not good at it, but it helps that War Thunder's mouse aim controls make flying planes fairly intuitive. Speaking of which, the recent air superiority update allows you to fly this plane, this plane, and this other one. I'm not good with planes, but you get to fly them over volcanoes. I feel like after that, I shouldn't even have to say anything. Just play the game. Do you have a PC, PlayStation, Xbox? There you go. No excuses. The game is free. You can find my link in the description, and if you haven't played in at least six months or you're new to the game entirely, using that link will get you the exclusive vehicle decorator, Eagle of Valor, 100,000 silver lions, and seven days of premium for your account but only for a limited time. And to celebrate the new year, you can claim these free decals from now until the end of January. Unfortunately, the Byzantines didn't have planes, so we're gonna have to get back to saving them through more medieval methods. Ah, uh, yeah, that's cursed. That's real cursed. Okay, what we're gonna do is embrace this first. We're gonna grab this, and then we're gonna grab that. Yep, that's fine. And actually, no, I'm gonna release Bulgaria. That's what I'm gonna do. We're just using regular troops, and we can take land back. Uh, kind of, sort of, maybe at some point. We'll repay as many loans as possible, starting with the cheapest one. I'm gonna sell off titles and actually, yeah, I'm gonna take land back as well. But hey, what a war. Yeah, that was, uh, that was something. It actually took longer than my test war last night. I ended that in, uh, 1453. I thought it was very poetic. Today, we end the war in 1456, a whole three years which means I spent a lot more money. Could have done better, but hey, for something I came up with on the fly, sort of, uh, it could have been worse. Anyway, we do get ducats and manpower and the recovery of Greece. It gives us power projection. We should also probably outclass some of our rivals pretty soon, so that's good. Uh, let me just turn these into states because we do need that to be stated. And right, of course, we also get a whole bunch of points for free, which is very nice. Uh, I should also start selling the institution to somebody. Why don't you like me anymore? You used to like me. I don't know what happened, but uh, let's see. We should be able to sell our knowledge. Wow, that's that's really not a lot of options, huh? I mean, the Pope would say yes, but that's not a lot of money. Okay, let's try Lithuania. Lithuania kind of likes us, sort of, and they're independent. Poland didn't take the PU for whatever reason. So let's just improve relations, see if we can get Lithuania, because they probably have the most money. Here we go. Outclass two more rivals. We'll go ahead and rival Naples, I guess. Uh, well, Ottomans for sure. Let's go ahead and insult Genoa from our power projection. Say no to the Pope. Oh, here we go. Let's go ahead and sell some titles. Let's seize Crown Land. These guys aren't going to like me, but that's fine. Uh, we can't repay all of our loans yet, can we? No. We can repay most of our loans, plus we have positive income, so I can live with that. Okay, next thing to do is get a spy network on Serbia. Assuming, do we actually need one? We don't need one. Okay. Well, we're going to get one anyway for faster sieging. Uh, they will be our next target. Oh yeah, we also have a few too many allies at this point, because we actually don't need Trebizond anymore. They were not that useful. And also, well, okay, I want to ally the knights, because I want to keep them from raiding my coasts, and that's how you can do that. Uh, I don't think we need Albania anymore, though. Yeah, let's get rid of Albania. As for useful allies, we could decide to pick up Muscovy. They do like us. That's pretty good. Although we wouldn't be able to sell the institution to Lithuania then. Muscovy has money. You know what? We can sell it to Muscovy. That's fine. Oh, right. There's also, right. There's a mission that uh, if you ally Muscovy, you do get some good stuff. 
That's good. And Diplo annexation of Orthodox countries no longer incurs Diplo rep penalty? Ooh, okay, we'll take that. Okay, over the course of the war, a couple of our cores decided to gain a little bit of autonomy, so we're just going to say no to that. It turns out Muscovy's broke. That's cool. I guess I could give it to my subject, but uh, they're also broke, so it doesn't even matter. Who isn't broke, actually? Who would accept this? Who has money and would accept this? It's just the Pope. The Pope is the most profitable country that would accept this. Okay, how about we do this? Uh, I'm going to strengthen my legitimacy once. I'm going to pick up this Diplo Rep Advisor, and maybe somebody would want knowledge sharing, like Lithuania. Perfect. Well worth the advisor. Speaking of which, I should pick up also probably... Wait, is that a level two? Hold on. An animist dude. Why are you animist? Okay, whatever. Uh, he costs the same as level one, but he's level two, so I'll take that, obviously. First reform. We can reform the Pornoia system, which sounds good, I think. Admittedly, I don't really know what they do. But uh, I think right now what I want to do is curtail noble privileges. They have a little bit too much influence, and by a little, I mean a lot. Like, it, it's really bad. Also, don't they need to dev a little bit more? Yeah. Four more times I can finish this off, which would be really good, actually. Maybe like here? That's not that bad. Okay, that should do it. Finish off this mission, which should also allow us to remove our issues much easier. Yeah, if we have 15,000 people the mill advisor of level 2 skill, we can remove our problems. Although, we don't really have the money for that, so... Hmm. I guess what we could do is actually take out a loan. Hire that guy. Uh, push the button whenever I have enough people, which will be soon-ish. And that's the man right on my border. Fantastic. Okay, do you, you want to like actually ally or something? I can't believe I let them do this. That, that's embarrassing, actually. I feel embarrassed over that. You know what I should do? I think I should make Bulgaria into a pro, 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 pernoyar. Yes, that. By default, they take away five land force limit. Oh, uh, ooh, maybe, maybe that's a bad idea. Maybe we don't do that. And again, uh, I don't have a lot of spaces. I don't have a lot of slots. I guess we have to integrate Athens, probably. Okay, the army has been repaired. Okay, now we can quarantine the province, which is good because um, we didn't have to spend the admin. Just waiting for these guys to finish their war so I can just like pounce on Wallachia or maybe Serbia, but that's going to take a few more years. Probably Wallachia, actually. Yeah, I'm going to invade them. I know they're going to take something that's like a core of Bulgaria, so I'll just use that for reconquest. It turns out we have a lot of rebels, which is entirely my fault. I did decrease a ton of autonomy. So if possible, when can I pick these up? That's going to take too long. Okay, we can grab these guys. They're pretty cheap. Hey, you know what? I don't think we actually need the alliance with the Pope anymore. Like, the Pope's nice to have, but that's only because we need the Merc cost decrease, and we kind of don't need that anymore. So, sorry, Pope. There uh, might be another renewal of the schism soon. Also, I'm going to insult Serbia, because if they don't like me, there's, like, a decent chance that uh, they might break the royal marriage, and that would be great for me. Please become hostile. Thank you. Please break the royal marriage. You'd be so kind. Okay, Velaki is done. Perfect. Let's go to war. We have good relations. Okay. Okay. I hate it when the AI does this. Stop improving my relations. I don't care about you. Go. Shoo. Okay, now we fight. I don't know if the fact that they didn't even take a Gullibaloo makes this sadder or funnier. It's gonna be a big war next, though. Plus, I do have my eye on the Mamluks. If I pick up that 6th Miltech before they pick up Miltech 5, it is over for them. Herzegovina is being a little bit cringe and annoying, so I'm just gonna seize this province and step on their capital. That, you know, sort of usually does most of the trick. Minus 3. Well, that sucks. Uh, let's go wipe some of their men first, then. Can we sell some more titles? Yeah, I'm gonna sell some more titles. And repay all of my loans, uh, which actually should allow us to finish this off. Thank you. A half-cost mint guy. Ooh, juicy. Wouldn't it be super funny if, like, Hungary invaded Wallachia at this point? That would be hilarious, I'm not gonna lie. Anyway, how's it Gavina? I don't care. You are going to give me money. And that's kind of it, actually. I, I don't care. Oh my god, wait, is that... Is that really Byzantine separatists sieging down the knights? Oh, I love Freeland. This is perfect. Okay, you, Wallachia. You will get fully annexed. Magically, I have to do this this way. I can't give this over to Bulgaria, because if I do that, like uh, like this, then I can't core this for some reason, even though, I mean, like, I, I would be able to core it, but the game doesn't think that, so. Um, we have to do it this way, and then I'll just give them that territory back. Actually, in fact, I should be able to core this and this. Not these two yet, but these border my subject on the same continent, which is why I can core them. Uh, and once these are done coring, I can core these. So, uh, we can hand this back, actually, to Bulgaria, and then we can take some land back. Okay, Hungary apparently wanted that I was actually going to ally them, but uh, turns out they really, really wanted that land, which is uh, kind of unfortunate. I guess we'll have to ally somebody else instead. Like, actually, you wouldn't be a bad idea. I might even say that would be a good idea. Let's ally you. Yeah, that's, that's good. 
it's a good idea. And next war, we are surprisingly not done yet. I want Kosovo. And there we go. We actually did end up getting Rhodes. That's super funny. <laughs> well, I, I guess I don't have to worry about that relationship slot anymore. That is pretty expensive, but as far as naval doctrines go, it's not really going to get any cheaper. And I, I kind of do want it. Mostly because when we fight the Mamluks, uh, they do have three heavies, which is a lot. But if we outnumber them with galleys and good enough galley combat, I don't think that's a problem. Only because we're in the Mediterranean, though. <laughs> Hold on a second. Wait, what? How did you get that? Okay, whatever you do, please do not attack me here. Uh, or wait, what are you doing? I'm pretty sure I scorched that. Yeah, hold, hold on a second. Like, if I did this, are, are you just gonna, like, lock in? Yeah, that wasn't a very good idea, was it? No, it was not. <laughs> Glad to know I can at least get a couple of good things out of this campaign. Oh, right on cue. Guess who decided to launch an invasion? Thanks, Hungary. I, I love the AI. They smelled the stack wipe in the water, and they're like, ooh, time to invade. Anyway, that's money, prestige. I don't care about literally anything else because you're probably going to get an X. And for Serbia, that's going to be all of this. We do have uh, quite a lot of cores to be coring here, and that's mainly because I can only core adjacent to my vessel. Uh, that's kind of a problem. Uh, I would like to annex Bulgaria as soon as possible, but we can't do that because there are still cores to take from the Ottomans, including cores that belong to me. We had a great start, didn't we? Oh, actually, before I start coring, though, click on this. We get permaclaims on the entire Balkans, which will make it cheaper to core right off the bat, and a claim on Carniola. Not that I really know where that is, but okay. The 100 Diplo would be really nice. Plus the AE might be something we have to consider. Okay, fine, we can go with this. Ooh, Diplo reputation and annexation cost decrease. I might want to start integrating my subjects, that's true. 60 Diplo is, eh, I can't really pass up on that. Okay, let's see what else we can get rid of. Uh, definitely officer rights, we don't need those anymore. But yeah, we also became a great power, that's cool. Nice to finally be back in the big leagues, eh? So, Athens, um, we're, we're gonna enforce your religion real quick if you don't mind. All right. I have cores on these guys. I can instantly integrate them. What was I even thinking? Of course, it wouldn't cost any Diplo. I'm stupid. <laughs> and we get faceting. Oh, this is great. Hey, listen, I might not get points for the best Byzantine opening ever, but I do get points for style, I think, okay? For the second time running this strategy, I don't think it's that bad. It may be by the fifth time it would have been better. Athens reclaimed. Beautiful. Prestige and Diplo power. We love to see that. As for allies, it looks like Lithuania might be a decent bet. And we did just free up two slots, so I think I'll say yes. All right, that's Meltek 6. Time for war, again. Okay, Austria is not gonna help me against the Memlocks, so I think, yeah, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and ask them for some manpower then. Okay, right, this guy died. That was pretty expected. He was super old, and so was this guy, goddamn. <laughs> that's not good, because the old guy was worse than this new guy, and this new guy is 60 years old. I was about to say, I think I'm gonna lose my dynasty. This is it, the game's apologizing. I accept your apology. Please. Please don't kill him. <laughs> God, please. Oh, that's so much manpower we've lost, but uh, it's worth it, I think, right? Okay, how about we sell off some more titles so I can build a church in Constantinople? All right, idea group. We're gonna go with offensive ideas. I think for something like Byzantium, because of like the idea set, uh, I would probably go with something like offensive, diplo, admin religious, maybe? Like if you can just inherit Ronoia, then you don't really need influence ideas. Anyway, this game's not gonna go that long. Unless you guys wanted to go that long. I don't know how long this video is. I did like a ton of microwing. I could make a part two. If you guys want a part two, I don't know, like th three, 3,000 likes? Sure, screw it. 3,000 likes, part two, I'll do it. All right, let's take some land back. We'll make that guy a little upset. Oh, wow. Really? On roads? Seriously? Okay, I don't have time to care about these guys, so we're just going to crush them. And then you, oh, it would be so great to crush you right there. We'll still have time to fight the Mamluks and then fight the Ottomans. I think we could do both, right? I will get rid of this stack, though, because they have no more manpower. And we can pick up the free company. Okay, we're going to hit him with a bit of a surprise, because we want to make sure, like, if they do somehow manage to fight off this stack, right? Now, that means that the siege ends. And we don't really want the siege to end, because we want to steal this siege. Okay. I think we're good to go. They really thought they would be able to get away scot-free with keeping me from taking Galibalu. See, the funny thing here, Mamlux, is that your heavies, your heavies are worthless. Your fleet is nothing. Fifteen ships lost in that battle. I would certainly hate to be that guy right now. Oh my god, you have to be kidding. We we just had this. Okay, um, no, that's, that's fine, I guess. We still have the god heir. As long as he lives, we're okay. I'm not even going to check if the pretender's better. There's like nine out of time tens. They're not. Nine out of time tens? Is that what I really just said? And that's a wipe. Okay. You know what? I probably should have built a flagship as well. Maybe one with the blockade or whatever. Might have been a good idea. Uh oh, that's a bit of an issue. Um, okay. You're gonna bag off of that. You're gonna scorch this and move into here. Also scorch that because yeah, they, they really want to fight us there, don't they? Uh oh. 
that's, that's kind of a problem because a lot, a lot of people we can't really fight. Um, oh, okay, never mind. That's perfect. Let's scorch that as well. Ooh, siege ability. Thank you. Hungary's rivaled me. Why would you do this? Oh yeah, you want Wallachia. <laughs> Forgot about that. Okay, here's the deal. I actually kind of don't want to siege that fort. Island's fort. I don't have a bunch of people. It's like not great. I think what I would prefer to do is just like make a landing in maybe Libya and then sort of push into Egypt. So the Ottomans expired, but uh, they can't attack us. We really can't attack them either at this point. We'll just have to wait for this war to be done first. Okay, I think I've sufficiently confused the AI. They came all the way up here to re-siege stuff. Realized, wait a second. He's not here. They are making their way down here though, which is like a little bit concerning. So I'm just gonna hire another Merc stack real quick. I know we don't have like a ton of money for it, but it's fine. Okay, what's the cheapest thing I could pick up right now? Probably palace guards actually. Well, hold on a second. The palace guards are more expensive, 25%. This is six, okay, never mind. What are you gonna do, attack me on Cairo? Not a very good idea. Or maybe, maybe not. Where's he going? Attacker against the Timurids in the Afghan war for independence. What? Wait, wait a minute. Wait, we were supposed to fight. No, no, hold on. Hold on a second. Get back here. Okay, yes. Are we going to fight? You came back because you wanted to fight me. Yes? No. Okay, I'm just gonna like drop this guy down right there then. Their tech five? Yeah, we should be fine. Costing shock. Oh dear god. Oh no, we lost St. Michael. That means we lost uh, all that discipline. We should probably try to get that back. Well, at least some of it. Oh, they are attacking me. Interesting. Let's see what you've got. Tech five. That's what they've got. <laughs> Oh god, this is gonna be such a bad idea for them. I don't understand why the AI would decide to take these kinds of battles. In the very beginning, they never had a chance of winning. And there goes Cairo. You know what I could do? Let me see if I can move some trade from Constantinople or into Constantinople. Okay, we earn 6.16 ducats here. I go over here and I turn on protect trade. What do we have? 6.84, okay. So if we accept Romanian culture, we should be able to upgrade this guy to level two. So let's do that. And if he's level two, then we should be able to end Latin favoritism. Holy, okay. That took a long time. More Byzantine pretender rebels. What is that? The, the fourth time this run so far? I mean, he's not that bad, but you know, still. 554 is a little better than 444. Okay, and they're willing to give up. That's perfect. I'm pretty sure all of this is stuff that I have claims on, except maybe this, but I don't want to siege that again, so I'm just going to take it. And I do need a lot of money. I will take, like, one province in Egypt, just because I can. That looks good. We get 10 prestige and 50 diplo for this. Very nice. You know, it's really funny. I just realized my country is still not connected up. Like, this entire part here is entirely disconnected. Now, that's great. Okay, uh, we'll have to send people across by boat. It's a good thing I have many boats. And the pretender is gone. Also pick this up. This will be the last idea we take before the next tech. Okay, before we start the next war, how about we just go and decrease the autonomy of uh, everything pretty much. Also, I think I would like to add a little bit of development into here just for that extra gold so we don't have to worry about money anymore. I'm kind of torn. Should I attack the Ottomans now and freeze my cores here or should I just like wait a few years? Honestly, two years is not that bad. I think I can wait. Just kidding. The glory of Rome waits for no man. Okay, what do I want out of this? I do like like the idea of just going with all the unique things, no matter like how good or bad they are. I feel like if they put effort into it, I might as well check them out. So in this case, we do get cost of advisors with ruler's religion minus 15%, which is pretty useful. <laughs> okay, we were dangerously close to having Gallipoli sieged again by somebody else, but the attacker's still my subject, Bulgaria, so we are going to get the siege, but goddamn, one time I can live with that. Twice? No. Oh, hold on a second, wait a minute. Personal union with who? Why is it always something weird whenever I play this game? Could also call in Kara Koyonlu. You know what? Sure. Why not? Uh-oh. Um, didn't expect to fight you there. We should be able to crush the Tunisian navy with no problem. I don't care that much about you, so you know what? Just leave. Really? Right now? Okay, man. Here's the deal. Uh, we're gonna drop off these mercs first to try and, uh, you know, do a tactical capital strike on at Tunis. And then I guess we can use the transports to fix that. Would you leave? Minus two when he says no. Okay, what about now? Yes, perfect, thank you. I would like you to break your alliance, and actually that that's fine, I don't even care. As for the Ottomans, uh, I actually don't want to take that much. That would cost an unnecessary amount of Diplo. Plus, I don't really have that much admin to core with. I'm still on tech five for admin. So we'll take this because we need it for a mission. We'll take these because, well, obvious reasons. I think I would much rather that we just fight them again in a couple years. So no money, that's fine. Okay, Bulgaria has been reconquered. Okay, that sounds great. And for your service, this actually. Uh, congratulations, Bulgaria. You're being upgraded to uh, a different kind of subject. Actually, I don't know if they'll like this very much, but <laughs> too bad. Okay, so how do I retract the right to inheritance? I think I just, I can do it for free. I did lose strong duchies, so I'm assuming that he's technically not a subject, but kind of is in the same way that a tributary is. Anyway, we've taken the Eastern Balkans. Very nice. That gives us 
quite a lot of points. And I should core everything for sure. And also, we get Asia Minor. Culture in Smyrna becomes Greek. Provinces in Aden in Huda Vendigar. I don't know how to pronounce that really. I will slowly begin converting to Greek or Pontic via an event. Okay, so how do we solve this again? Uh, we need to decrease their liberty desire and then... Okay, I see. Right. So this is very cheap and it decreases it by 10%. And then in theory, I should be able to just like ask and they say yes. Okay. Uh, sure. Triumph in the Asia Minor Coast. I forgot about these decisions. These things are like ancient. Okay, so it seems I am going to have to stop being friends with the West temporarily, which kind of sucks. That means I'm going to have to break all of my alliances with Catholic countries. Yippee. So to prepare for that, I'm going to make sure I'm already royal married to all of them. I might have the opportunity to revoke this reliance on republics thing, and that would be pretty nice. So I'm going to sell some more titles. I'm sorry. I keep selling titles. I'm sure someone's really angry at me selling like all my crown land. When the last guy died, a pretender rose up. And when this new guy shows up, Another pretender shows up. Alrighty then. What province is that? That's fine. Okay, what do we have here? Whores, evidently. Hungary will cede Visakoi. Whoa, 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 hold on a second. That's a lot of provinces. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Uh, you, you gave me a lot of stuff. What aggressive expansion is that? Okay. Uh, that's not too bad. We can live with that. That's all right. They're a real homie, which is why it pains me so much that I have to unally them, even temporarily. Trust me, but okay, L listen, this isn't because I hate you, okay? I have to do what's right for orthodoxy, okay? Oh my god, bro, you... <laughs> Please. Please, man. Okay, you know what? You know what? You're, you're a different story, Lithuania, okay? You were cool for a minute there. You may lose that war. That is a risk I am willing to take. As for Austria, I'm really sorry, man. You gotta make choices in life sometimes, you know? Oh, shoot. Yeah, I uh, completely forgot that taking land back would have uh, created an issue. One second. You can just create a church, it's fine. Okay, I think I have a few too many forts, so I should probably get rid of at least one. I'm gonna say probably Gallipoli. I don't think we need Gallipoli. All right, Bulgaria, what's your problem? Why are you so upset? Just by being a Pornoyar? Okay, well, I can't too much about that. What if you just chill, actually? Thanks. But yeah, I also picked up Diplo ideas. You know who I should ally, though? Oh my god, that would be so funny. Not yet, because they might pull me in. I will royal marry them, though, because this guy's 58 years old. It would be nice to get a potential Poland PU. Okay, we end the Union of Churches. We should be able to get Austria back as an ally. Now, that does finish off a mission here. Unlocks legitimization of the dynasty. Yearly patriarch authority decrease, but we do get legitimacy, tolerance of the true faith, and autonomy change decrease. Doesn't seem all that bad. Right, and we do get a new government reform, the reformed Byzantine monarchy, which is great. It means that we're not going to have pretender rebels 60 bajillion times throughout this playthrough. You know, I already had to fight like four stacks by this point. That being said, I might swap away from curtailing noble privileges because, you know, the, the nobles are, they're kind of fine. And swapping over to this seems kind of interesting. Creating client states this early in the game is not really something I've thought about. In fact, I haven't thought about client states in a long time, but I guess it would make sense you create a client state if you don't have any you know vassals around and then you can turn that into a pranoia and then you get to integrate it for free so it actually sounds kind of broken when you put it that way <laughs> apparently i do have to invade both theodoro and trebizond which is uh, lots of fun there can only be one byzantine culture country now could i do the same for trebizond probably yeah i mean george is not willing to help it's only five thousand men it's a mountain fort but that's fine. Oh wait, hold on a second. Hungarian exiles. Oh, how the tables have turned. Oh, there we go. We've inherited Bulgaria finally. It's a uh, rather strong ability. Just inherit your subjects for free. Not sure how I feel about that. All right, that finishes off this mission. Get perma claims on Imereti bunch of other things. Okay, sure. There is only one Roman Empire. True. And it's us. We've always been the Roman Empire. Okay, I think by this point, mercs are a little bit more expensive than regular troops, and I do have lots of manpower, so I'm going to finally get rid of them. Oh, come on. You have to be joking, right? If I get these for free, I will be so happy. Not to mention, I think I would actually like to take all of their Pontic possessions. No! <laughs> well, we get a core anyway. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Got blindsided for a second. I'm like, oh, I need an extra general for this guy, because he's going to invade Anatolia while these guys invade into Cairo. You know, I get the general and then, oh, yep, that's, uh, that's a lot of pips, goddamn. <laughs> I'm gonna call in Kara Koyonlu into this war, not because I need their help, but mainly because I don't want them to start their own separate war against the Mamluks, because they might take some stuff that I want, and that's kind of an issue, so just to be sure about that, I'm gonna call them in. Rip, Cairo. Come on, Austria, don't you see I'm at war right now? Anhalt, Nuremberg, 
Rothenburg, silly. Oh, okay, that's not really that bad. All right, let's destroy that fleet. We should be just about done. Except, what is that, bruh? Okay, whatever. We'll deal with that in a minute. Well, that's that. It'll be exactly 100% overextension. Uh, okay, I don't know whether or not that's going to be an actual issue, but well, we'll find out. As for the coalition, I'd like to see them try. Oh, beautiful. Look at all that. Not bad for 50 years of progress. As for the overextension thing, I'm just going to do like a very small concentrate development. It'll take two dev and add one to the capital. It'll just bring to just below 100%. I was gonna say, hmm, I feel like I have more men than this. I'm, I'm pretty sure I went to war with more than that. Oh, yeah, there they are. <laughs> I'm actually somewhat surprised. It seems like Austria's losing this war, and that's probably because they lost the emperorship. Yeah, they lost it to Hesse. That's embarrassing. So just as a treat, we can go help them out a little bit, even though I don't really want to. And once those cores are done, I do want to attack Cyprus, because uh, that means I can renew my war with the Memlux, which is great because we currently have a very, very long truce. All right, now the core are done. I'm thinking probably good enough for Austria to carry out the rest of that war. Are you happy now? I helped you out, okay? I have repaid my debts. Anyway, I did get more governing capacity, so we are able to state more things. That'll be uh, pretty much all of Anatolia. Ooh, that's not too expensive. We are like at half cost on cores right now, so that's good. That should, yeah, there we go. Now we're making money again. Nice. Of course, we can't forget to decrease that autonomy as well. Ah, except we're at war, right? Forgot. Never mind. We can't do that. Actually, could I leave this war? Would you care that much? Hmm, 59 trust i would lose what 10 trust and trust is not that bad yeah we're gonna leave this war actually okay let's rival lithuania i guess because they don't like us for some reason anyway we can decrease all that autonomy and that's gonna be it for the ottomans Eesh, that's pretty steep but uh, i don't want to spend admin i guess i could sell titles is that a good idea right now yeah you know it's still age of discovery i'm gonna sell some titles i feel like i've been selling titles so much more often in this campaign than i usually do but honestly i think that's been a really positive thing i've gotten so much money from it now judging by world economies we are kind of in third place and that's not bad for 50 years of progress. Well, honestly, probably fourth place because Ming does exist still. Okay, time for one of my biggest pet peeves, sieging down Gazakamuk. Maybe it's recency bias, but I just, I really, I hate sieging this guy down. It, it, for some reason, he allies everybody. In like every game, I always have to fight Gazakamuk. It's always inevitable. You know, it's one of the few level three mountain forts to start in the game. You know, it makes sense. It's the Caucasus, but man, I just, I hate sieging that every single time. Anyway, Akkoy only would say yes. It's a little bit of aggressive expansion, but at this point, I simply don't don't care. Okay, I can have this army go down here and deal with this. I don't think Gazakamuk's going to attack this fort. I don't think they have the gall to do that. You know, they're Tech 6, fewer people. I'm Tech 8, so that's probably fine there. Speaking of Gaul, uh, like this province, Galatia, did you know that there used to be Gauls living in this place right here, and that's why it's called Galatia? Just kidding, I made that up. I have absolutely no idea. But you probably believed me, didn't you? Okay, please stop allying literally all of your allies. Thank you. Frankly, uh, I never want to see you again, so... Uh, tough luck, have fun. And that'll be it for the Ottomans. Oh, how the mighty fall. Okay, we've avenged 1071. Not sure what happened at that point. I have a very large gap in my knowledge between 15 BC and uh, pretty much the early 1400s. So I'm sure that sucked, but we fixed it. <laughs> now for this mission, we can go through each of the options here. Uh, first of all, I'm just going to take the middle one, but I'll explain why as well. Uh, the bottom one is pretty much useless. The reason why is because sure, you get 25% local manpower modifier in every Turkish province, uh, which does mitigate very slightly the penalty from not having Turkish as an accepted culture. But it's only for like 25 years. You know, that's not really that great. And sure, the Turkish Janissaries are, are cool and all that, but, um, you know... I prefer to just not have to hire mercenaries to begin with because they do become more expensive after a while, so. Anyway, as for this one, we could gain Turkish as an accepted culture, but it does mention that, like, you know, if we don't have enough slots, we just don't get the accepted culture. It's not like it's a free slot like what they did with Bulgaria. Bulgaria was free to accept as a culture. That was through a mission. But this isn't, and that's kind of different. You know, the whole Greek, the Byzantine group here, it just kind of sucks. Really terrible culture group. Uh, you really don't have a lot, so when you become a cultural union of every Byzantine culture, you're really just sitting with a Greek. Like a little bit over here, but mostly Greek. I think the only worst culture group in the entire game is like Korean, I think, because it only consists of Korean. But uh, yeah, if I can save myself uh, an accepted culture slot by simply not having to accept Turkish, then that would be great. You know, we're gonna have to accept a whole bunch of cultures anyway. It's pretty much inevitable. And we get more points for that. That's perfect. Ooh, that's interesting. It doesn't actually always convert it to Greek. Sometimes it converts it to Pontic. Ooh. Also, I just remembered that Byzantium starts as an empire, so we already have our cultural union. Okay, so here's what we're going to do about the whole uh, Venice issue, right? Because Venice has been like a thorn in my side the whole time. They are allied to France, and that's terrible, right? So, to get 
past that whole issue, we can just attack their trade league, meaning Cyprus. And also, we can bring in uh, the Mamluks against us, which is good because we currently have a 10 year truce with the Mamluks. But if we fight them to a white piece, then that reduces it to a 5 year truce. It means we can just conquer them faster. Another thing that allows me to do is uh, prevents my ally from starting their own war against the Mamluks, right? We have like the same truce timer here. It's the exact same, right? October 1506. So. If I'm not paying attention, they can just start their own war and call me in, which is not preferable. So what I would like to do instead is uh, shorten the truce, not call in these guys, so that I can just fight them and uh, cut off Arakoyonlu from even getting any of this territory. And that would be nice. So we're going to declare the war on Cyprus. Anything else I should do, actually? Could wait for that. Uh, it's probably not worth it. Whatever. Let's declare the war. We'll call in Austria because they're very helpful against uh, Venice. I don't really want much from Venice, really. So they can work on that for me and we can work on... The Mamluks. The only thing is, like, uh, Venice is a really strong navy. Venice is one of the only nations in the entire game that consistently goes over both their army and navy force limit just for the sake of it. They just have so much money, so they can afford it, so they, they think, like, why not, right? Their naval force limit is 52, which, first of all, is uh, absolutely insane. Second of all, they're at 55 ships. All I have to say is eight heavies Venice. Fortunately, it is still pre 1500s, so galleys are king, and I have a 20% LA combat ability. So hopefully things still work out for us. Never mind, that was super easy. Goddamn. <laughs> I may have overestimated the Venetian Navy. <laughs> okay, these navies are starting to annoy me a little bit, so I'm just gonna crush them. Sometimes the AI doesn't upgrade their ships, and if you don't, that's also a problem. But if you do, then everything is chillin'. Oh, we're annihilating them. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, no. <laughs> Ooh, this is a really, really bad place for that to be in. Um, hmm. You know, I feel like I don't really give a lot of advice in my videos. Like, not as much as maybe I should. But then again, it also adds, like, the total amount of stuff I have to edit through. And also, it increases the runtime. And some people don't want super long videos, so. Actually, here's a bit of a free one. Uh, you probably already know about this. But, like, if you are bringing your ally into a war and they're allied to somebody else, then, like, they're not going to accept that all the arms yet because you're fighting on the same side. Now, what this actually means is that the country actually just isn't going to send the call to arms, right? It's not going to break the alliance with Austria, but it means is we have to finish this war with Ragusa before we end the war with Cyprus. Otherwise, Austria may still join the war, and that's kind of a problem. So we're just going to quickly rush them down. And also, I finished off one of the diet missions, so I got myself a level 3 missionary strength guy. Ooh, that's really good. Four ducats. Pretty good. Okay. What I'm going to do for that is, because I don't really have a lot of money, and I feel like I'm going to end up taking loans during this war probably anyway, so I'm just going to ask for the burger loan. The amount of interest you get from five burger loans is roughly the amount of interest you'll get from one and a quarter regular loans, right? So it's like always better to take the burger loans. Don't worry about like the mercantilism thing. You do lose one mercantilism every time you take it, but like it doesn't really matter. It's sort of irrelevant. The money is very important. Anyway, we're going to use that to hire the level three guy because he's actually cheaper than the guy we have right now surprisingly enough right like this guy's 4.34 level two and this guy's four dockets level three also by hiring that guy a level three advisor we finish off this mission which gives us a stability and the religious state privilege is improved oh yeah it's like the one that we almost always take in every game that's pretty good so it also reduces the stab cost modifier nice i want to get the mamluks out in any reasonable amount of time i'm gonna have to go down to cairo which is sort of the main reason why i even grabbed this port like sure it gives me trade and that's nice and all that that, but no, a quick and easy way to just like walk directly into Cairo is really nice. Ooh, darn it. I left the, I left the Venetian Navy out. I'm stupid. How did I do that? Go shoo back in your cage. Okay, Diplo ideas are complete. That's great. Lowered impact on stability from diplomatic actions is a lot stronger than you think it is. So if you're trying to like PU somebody, then of course you're going to fish for the PU by using a royal marriage. But if they end up getting an heir, then that royal marriage is like not that useful anymore. So if it's somebody that you don't really care about, you can just break it. Normally that costs one stability, but with Diplo ideas, it's free. Well, it costs one prestige but that's practically free. Anyway, it looks like that's the end of the Venetian Navy rip. I really should also pick up Defender of the Faith. The only real downside to Defender of the Faith is that you actually need to defend people of your faith. I know, shocking, right? But if you want to see if that's going to happen, uh, immediately at least, then you really just have to go and look at, uh, where is it? Relations, current wars, you look at all the wars. Is there anybody who's defending which is of the Orthodox faith against somebody who isn't? That's the real question. And as long as all of these countries have, in fact, not actually changed their religion, then we should be good to go. Otherwise, if you declare Defender of the Faith and, like, there's already an ongoing war, then you might get called into it. I think it's happened to me once or twice, so. Now, for Ragusa, we're just going to fully annex you. That should be no issue, right? Nobody cares. Perfect. Now that they're gone, of course, Austria cannot be called into a defensive war because, well, they don't exist. And Albania. 
Albania is gone. Sorry, Albania bros. Oh, okay, here we go. The Mamluks are willing to leave. This is perfect. They are allied with Hormuz, which is weak, I imagine, probably. Yeah, their name doesn't look that big, and we can see their capital here still, so I don't think it's that big of an issue. Medina, of course, doesn't matter. Yemen doesn't matter. They're super small and very weak. If you can, make sure that your rivals always have weak allies. Like, you could cancel them for prestige, but keep in mind, like, who are they going to replace them with? Uh, sometimes breaking an alliance leads to a far worse alliance forming, so in this case, that's fine. We're just gonna wipe peace with the Mamluks. Hmm, do I want to support the Florentine school? I'm gonna say no. I think I'm expanding so rapidly that my prestige is usually somewhere in the 90 to 100 range, sometimes a little bit less than that, so I don't think we need the yearly prestige. You know what? Honestly, this guy kind of sucks. I might get rid of him. <laughs> if you have a terrible heir, then prestige is really just a resource that you spend on getting more mana points, if you think about it, right? If you use prestige to disinherit, you might get somebody better, which gives you more points. Anyway, in this case, I actually will take it because I plan on getting rid of this guy. He kind of sucks. And this guy is fertile. Of course, we can have a new heir in no time. All right, another mission has been completed. Economic independence. Yippee. Ah, uh, here we go. Taking the burger loans no longer depletes mercantilism. The minor side effect, it's like not crazy or anything, but that's nice to have. And then of course, we can also get trade efficiency for 10 years, which honestly, I think is better than the combat ability at this point. I already have 20%, which is pretty massive. Plus, I have the largest navy in the Mediterranean. I don't think anybody can even compete at this point. Like maybe Castile, possibly. Venice certainly couldn't. They do have eight heavies, but they have no galleys, which means if we ever fought in the Mediterranean, it's GG, I already win. In which case, yeah, we don't really need more galley combat. It's really fine just to take the bottom option. Yeah, we'll go with that. That's fine. Well, here's also another freebie. So, um, whenever there are separatist rebels, they always spawn in the highest development province. Always, without exception. So, um, for example, if we have the Ottoman separatists that are gonna spawn relatively soon, kind of, uh, there are two possible locations. There's this one, and there's this one. This is eight development. This is nine development, which means they're gonna spawn here. Always. No exceptions. Unless something, like, really weird happens that, like, I don't know, is sort of in explicable like 99% of the time that's the case and a new heir they suck congratulations okay time to get rid of you as well this is why you should stack prestige more prestige means you can do this more often in case you needed some proof then there it is you know exactly as predicted this province nine development high stuff province also when it comes to this event i almost always take the top option professionalism is kind of hard to come by we either need to spend a lot of time and money Drilling troops, which I'm not a big fan of, or you're gonna have to spend like a lot of mill points. So getting it for money is great. This is much cheaper than it would take to drill this much professionalism. Anyway, we finished off offensive ideas and that combination with Diplo gives us, you know what, that's okay. I expected something far worse, to be honest. Ooh, Austria left. Why'd you do that? Are you, are you dumb? Why? Okay. Well, that's uh, kind of fine, I think. That's not a big issue. We've already taken Cyprus. Oh, yeah, I did have a few ships docked in Austrian ports, though, so that kind of sucks. Should be able to fight you still, no problem. Okay, yeah, it's over for the Venetian Navy. I thought, you know, maybe some of that was Austria helping me. No, it doesn't really matter. In fact, if I could just blockade you. Ooh, that's enough war score. I really only want them to break their alliances. I still need a short enough truce that they can't get those alliances back before the next war. Hmm. Okay, yeah, you know what? That actually works just fine. The reason I didn't take land is because some reason I find that it's usually the Catholics that get the most upset when you take land. Maybe just because there's like a lot more development in Europe than like, you know, this general area. So yeah, we still have like really low aggressive expansion in this region. I mean, I'm going to fix that soon, but for the time being at least. Anyway, that leaves us with Cyprus. And for some reason, I also finish this mission? Oh, right, yeah, I just finished building another workshop, that's why. Okay, if the Umparoi have 60 loyalty, then we get an extra two candlism, and look at that, it's just gonna take a few more months, so we can wait on that. Actually, you know what I could do? If I just hit the summon the diet option right now, we can finish that off immediately, right? Extra two mercantilism, thank you. Then we can go with just kind of whatever. Uh, I guess that works. A church is fine in there. Then we can take some land back. And for the new century, we are the number one great power. That feels good. When I first started playing this game, one of my early goals was to uh, get any sort of great power by the year 1500. And nowadays, it's uh, really not that hard. Not sure how much of that is uh, me becoming better at this game and how much of that is power creep, but uh, that aside. Okay, let's go ahead and just grab all this stuff from Genoa. I kind of want all of their holdings here as well. I don't have claims on them, but that's fine. I think I'll just take them anyway. Now, we are fighting Lithuania, and Lithuania is, generally speaking, fairly strong, but I don't think it's going to be much of an issue, as long as we lock down this fort super quickly by doing a barrage, probably not assault, but at least a barrage, and I don't think that's really a big issue. There we go. No problem. It's annoying, but are we going to get there on time? Maybe? There we go. It's over. GG. And a 2-3-3. Yeesh. Really just can't get something better, can we? All right, time to get rid of you as well. Okay, this is going to be a little bit of a risky maneuver here, because I can't really guarantee that things are going to work out here, but um, this is kind of like uh, sort of a weird move, but usually works out. I'm going to catch them by surprise by actually doing a naval landing on top of them. And since this is our fort, we're the defender. It's really not a big issue. It'll take literally zero penalties for doing this, and it won't give them the opportunity to try to like run away or anything. They'll think like, oh, what a stupid 
stupid idea. He's sending 25k into 34k. Well, surprise. <laughs> okay, I would love to keep on selling titles, but the problem here is I am starting to run out of governing capacity a little bit. I don't even think I've expanded infrastructure anywhere. I know there's a map mode for that now. Here we go. Yeah, I haven't done any of it. Okay. Suffering from success. Okay, time to use a little bit of crown land on that then. All right, I've been focusing on admin for the longest time because I felt like I wasn't having enough admin to expand quickly. And now I think I have the opposite problem. I think I have too much admin for my expansion rate. Besides, I only have so much governing capacity. I feel like if I keep going at this rate, I'm going to hit a wall at some point, especially because I have this minus 25% CCR. So it might be a good idea actually to just like stop focusing on admin. Instead, I can focus on like mills, start dumping some points into manpower or production for more money. Not that I really think we need more money, so I might just go for mill actually. Yeah, let's do that. Manpower is nice. It's the thing we have the least of right now, so dropping a few points wouldn't be that big of an issue. Also, we're not going to naturally get colonialism. It's just not going to happen for us because we're not Catholic. So we're going to have to develop it, and I'm thinking... Constantinople is a great place to rebuild. We do need to get it to 40 development, so we might as well spend our time working on that. And even though Lithuania is willing to peace out right now, I think what I want to do is something a little cheeky. Just take like maybe three provinces. These two here in this one. This is a trade center in Crimea, so I kind of want it. This will also connect up all my territory, and I kind of want to release a vassal. Might release Kiev, use reconquest for their cores, and then just expand them, turn them into a pronoia, and then inherit. I think that's probably one of the best cases for us, because it is literally just free land when you do that. Kind of crazy to think about. It's actually just free land. It's like PUs. Even PUs you usually have to integrate. Sometimes you don't. It's just, it's so strong. <laughs> the last jousting tournament in 1504. Yeah, sure. You know what? Why not? Extra prestige, morale of armies, army tradition. A 351. Uh, okay. Still average. And I'm kind of looking for above average. That's the entire point of this. This guy, he's still 37. That's pretty young. Plus he's fertile. So I think we can keep on going. Oh, come on. Really, man? I fight his rebels as well? This sucks. This whole war sucks. Why did I do this? Have my own rebels to deal with, man. Okay, we're just gonna go ahead and assault that. That's like free. Please? Yes, finally. That is everything I want from Lithuania. This will take like, okay, no humiliate. That's fine. We don't need that. Uh, war reps? Nope. Okay. I actually don't even care. Goodbye. You know, normally I would say this is an absolutely cracked reform to take because that's yearly patriarch authority plus 0.2. At the same time, we're already at max. It doesn't even matter. This is the most we're going to get. So in this case, I might actually change something up a little bit. I think what I want right now is diplomats and all estates loyalty equilibrium. I might be able to revoke some of the stuff from the burgers that I really don't want them to have anymore. Like the force draft and the naval school rights are really not that great. And the diplomat, I can set to improve relations with people who kind of hate me. As for Genoa, I'm going to be taking all of that. It's a little bit of a coalition. Lithuania, Hungary, Great Horde, Genoa, Mamluks, Crimea. Not really that bad though. We start off as Orthodox, which is great. A lot of this land is actually Orthodox, so it makes for great reconquest and incorporation. Hey, next rival. I almost feel inclined to say Karakoyonu, actually. When I really need to invade uh, the Mamluks, like right now. I was putting that off for a little bit because I was at war, but uh, yeah, we don't really have a choice. In fact, what I should do right now is I don't want them to think that I'm going to have their back on this, actually. What's your opinion of my AE? Nothing? Okay, perfect. Yeah, we're gonna rival you, actually. Oh no, Poland's rivaled me. Ah, oh, that sucks. I wanted to be friends with you. Well, darn. Okay, we'll have to find somebody else then. Uh, maybe I could get France to like me if I try hard enough. Ooh, nope, they hate me. Never mind. Really not a lot of good options here. I think I'm starting to anger people. Yeah, a little bit. Okay, that's fair. Well, too bad. I have things to invade. Actually, right, I forgot the uh, coalition's definitely going to start reforming now that the Mamluks are um, available, actually, to join. So what we're going to do is we're going to invade right now. Even though I don't have everything ready, it's kind of important. Otherwise, that coalition is going to be really annoying. If at all possible, it's always great to wipe out the enemy's stacks early, especially if they don't have much manpower. Ooh, we can call it Austria. Don't mind if I do. Ooh, that's pretty close. Can we win that? Probably yes, because we have 15% additional discipline. Okay, the manpower is looking really bad. So I think I'm just going to sit back, deal with my rebels, and I'm going to let Austria do most of the heavy lifting. Because, you know, I did a lot so far. That's 56,000 casualties they've taken. And I've taken 25,000 already. So I think I'm just going to sit back, let Austria do some work for me. In fact, I'll go ahead and I'll deal with Austria's rebels because whenever someone has rebels, it actually decreases their willingness to fight, right? See, Austria has a minus eight from having revolts. And that's even just having a small revolt. Like 10k isn't that much. It's not that big of a threat. But it can stack up over time and it gets annoying. So, okay, the manpower situation situation has been mostly fixed. We do generate just shy of 900 a month, which is pretty solid for 1500. Of course, one of the main reasons for that being that I'm converting like everything and I have max patriarch authority, which gives 33% local manpower modifier. If we think about it, it has a fairly similar effect to the first quantity idea, so it's very strong. And then of course, once we finish the third idea,
Sophia group, we are going to get an extra 15%, which is massive. Hopefully, after this war, we're not going to have any more manpower issues. You know what? Considering that I am kind of cycling through airs to try and find a good one, I think I actually do want this prestige. And it depends on how much prestige I'm going to get out of this. 26%? I'm only actually going to get 17, that's not very much. Okay, in that case, I actually will take this bottom one, even though the admin is usually what you would take. Technically, taking the prestige is also giving me points. Oh, here we go. 435. I knew at some point we had to get a good air. Eventually, if you gamble long enough, you'll win. Right, guys? Right? That's why you should always gamble. All right, there we are. We've taken Mecha, and that's going to allow us to take all this stuff here. I think, tragically, we are going to need a little bit of stuff from Karakoyonlu. Okay, well, for now, I'm going to take this, because I want uh, just a little bit over here. There's more trade power in this province, a little bit of goods produced, plus Jerusalem is a great monument to take. It does start at level two, right? So it decreases by one when I take it, but it's still one. So in that case, uh, I will want to release Syria from this province. It is Syrian culture, of course. Keep in mind that you can only release a tag of the primary culture of its, you know, tag. So generally, I'm going to take the least aggressive expansion province. This is seven developments, so it's not as bad as if I took this, which is 11, or this, which is 22. And then I can release Syria for reconquest. Beautiful. We will start off as Sunni, but that's okay. I'm going to take this opportunity to actually enforce religion, because we are going to have a truce with them. So if they're going to be angry, I'd rather they be angry while we have a truce. Again, we are getting kind of close in that governing capacity, so I just took some land back, and I'm going to give out land rights to somebody. I guess the Cossacks, maybe? Yeah, they seem like they need the most loyalty right now, so. Also, while we're here, let's just bump up Constantinople a little bit, make that uh, 25 dev, so we can just do this. Oh, and also, 25 development did something. It did. Okay. Primary trade capital till the end of the game. Dev cost minus 20%. That's really good. Only 30 to dev that. That's insane. Okay. Uh, we can also click this button, expand infrastructure, which will make it even cheaper. And ooh, that's going to be so good for deving that institution. It's a minus 130 cost. It's like I'm playing Korea or something. Okay. Let's dev that up. Another expand infrastructure, even temporarily, even if we don't like really want to keep that, we're going to do it anyway. Jerusalem reclaim. Let's go. 20 patriarch authority, which we can't really use. I guess maybe I could select something else and then reselect this just to refresh it. Actually, it doesn't seem like a bad idea. Oh, I should have I should have clicked this. I should have gone with this one, dev and then swapped it over. Oh, that sucks. Not really much of a point in doing that now, is there? No, there still kind of is, actually. What? Hey, listen, man. Um, kind of just finished a war and I have no manpower. No AI would ever accept this call to arms in these circumstances. I Yes, that's fine. <laughs> Wait, I can just leave this war immediately? Dude, that's super funny. How much trust do you have with me again? Oh, that's so many favors. Okay. Well, there are two things I would normally do with that many favors, right? Either I would bump up trust a whole lot, or I would wait until they don't have an heir. Because, uh, you know, there's a fancy little button right there, which does put your dynasty on their heir throne thing, whatever, right? But in this case, I am going to get just a little bit of trust, and then I'm going to betray it immediately. Because honestly, uh, I just kind of don't want to be in that war. Anyway, it looks like it's definitely going to be a rivalry with Poland, which is really funny, because I'm going to end up fighting the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth anyway, probably. If Poland and Lithuania, who both hate me, decide to ally together, it would be super funny. Oh, also, we can start the Golden Era. I forgot about that. We have more than enough centers of trade. We have a large city. I actually considered doing a Humiliate with the Mamluks just for that, and then I realized, like, it just doesn't matter, so. I didn't, but I could have. And you'd think, surely at this point, we've been at war pretty consistently for, like, the past 60 or so years, right? Surely we'll, we'll be done now, right? <laughs> uh, you'd, you'd think. You'd think, wouldn't you? Sadly, somebody still owns a little bit too much trade power in my capital mode. Ooh, are we not going to be good enough for that? Oh, I lost my admiral. That would happen. Okay. Yeah, we can't fight that without an admiral. Oh man, even the admiral sucks. Okay, hold on a second. Wait a minute. Uh, could I ask you for an admiral? Okay, I can live with that. Okay, we do have colonialism in Constantinople now. I'm just going to debase it because I like having money. So that should start to spread. Yeah, maybe not very quickly. I think colonialism is one of the faster ones though, right? Oh, it definitely is. Yeah. Compared to like printing press, which takes ages. And the great thing about the position of Constantinople is that it borders so many different tiles. You know, just spawning it in this one province. How many tiles? tiles is that? 11 tiles spreading colonialism just from that. That's huge. Okay, here's the hoping the galleys can carry us this time. We do have more maneuver, so I'm hoping we do have more combat width, and that's super important. Yeah, look at that. 38 combat width versus their 31. That's huge, because look, they have two heavies that aren't in the battle. Really just means that they can dish out less firepower in the same tick as we can. Even if they reinforce, you know, they're, they're already losing way too many ships. The morale is going to run out. Yeah, deadly. Okay, silly is willing to leave. Silly little boy. Do I want to give you to Austria? No, that's fine, actually. I would prefer they stay there so that anybody who wants to ally 
like them can just waste a diplo slot with that. Anyway, uh, welcome to being orthodox. Have fun. Uh oh, I wasn't prepared for that. Hold on a second. Okay, yeah, that could have been bad. Oh no, they're attacking my 1Ks, but that's okay, because the entire point of me spreading them out like this is actually to bait them off of sieging their own stuff. So uh, even if I don't have more war score from it, it does decrease their uh, war enthusiasm. So now we can get them out, break your alliance with the people that I don't want you to be allied with. Thank you and goodbye. Anyway, that being said, I am going to turn this into a state. I probably will not turn Egypt into a state though. Yeah, just for the heck of it, I decided to bump up the amount of gold production because we do have a mission for that. Yeah, gold income at least 10. That's so weird. Especially because there's only one easily accessible gold province. It's literally just this one. That's it. Anyway, that does give us two years of trade income. I mean, that's not bad. Some people would tell you to wait to grab that because you're going to have more money later on. But in my opinion, more money now is always better. Use that money now to invest and more money later. That's the idea, right? And that's the Siege of Venice. Hey, you guys remember that, uh, that fourth crusade? I'll tell you what I do. Oh, you actually could. Okay. I'm not gonna take Venice because clearly I have to do some other things first, but the fact that I can just burn Venice to the ground is super funny. You know, it would be even funnier though if it actually wasn't the fourth crusade. I'm actually just gonna check real quick. I was right. It was the fourth crusade. There you go. Call me what you want, but never call me a fake history enjoyer. Anyway, I am going to wait for Austria to finish sieging Bosnia because for some reason they don't want it, but but I kind of do. Yeah, thank you. All right, Venice, I will be taking uh, not literally everything. Do I want to take Istria? Kind of do, just because I want to punish them for being rude. Oh, that makes Castile angry. Okay, never mind. We're not going to do that. I'm sure this is punishment enough. You've repulsed the Republics, giving 50 trade power in Constantinople for the rest of the game. That is massive. That does mean we owe 96% of the trade in the capital now. Much, much better than where we started. Also means, of course, we can get a triumph for Greece and a triumph for the Balkans, which is huge. Uh, we already have max army tradition though, and nearly max prestige. So instead of taking those, I'm actually just going to sit on them for a while. I can take them at any point and it's basically just a free charge of prestige or army tradition. If we ever have to cycle through heirs again, that's going to be super useful. As for army tradition, at the rate of expansion we're going at, I don't really think we're going to dip that far below 100 at any given time, but just in case it could be helpful. And with all those cores done, this is everything you would need for the Basilius achievement. Plus a little bit extra. You don't need this for the Basilius achievement. And finally, we can rest with the glory of Rome more or less kind of reestablished. Technically not number one great power because I have to wait like a few months before I accept the institution. But if we're going by raw stats, we do have the largest income. I believe we make the most manpower per month or maybe the most max. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, most max and I guess monthly, I suppose so, because there are no more Ottomans. Anyway, in terms of discipline uh we're kind of close up there if we take our next idea group we would be able to grab this discipline here or if i wanted to i could just hire a discipline guy siege ability is looking pretty good because i have offensive ideas and yeah that's kind of it i hesitate to call these guides or anything because really most of the stuff you saw in this video can't be replicated like not reliably at least if my opening move strategy ends up working for you which would be like the third time it works in a row then congratulations uh that was entirely unintentional as for everything else it's really just me playing the way that I usually play. Regardless, I hope you enjoyed watching. I know for sure this video is going to be longer, even though I do say that in every single video, only because of all the restart attempts, plus the fact that I wasn't really sure how long I wanted to play, and I did a lot of micro while talking about that micro. In any case, thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel for more EU4 stuff, then it would definitely be appreciated. And I think I mentioned something somewhere in the video about 3,000 likes for a part two. Now that I've done a lot more into this campaign, Pain. I'm starting to regret those words a little bit, but you know, I did make a promise and I do stand by my word. 3,000 likes and I will start working on that. For now though, this is Corbett signing off and as always, have a fantastic day. Just kidding, you really thought you could get away without signing up for War Thunder? Remember, it's on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. It's free to play and using the link in the description will grant the exclusive Vehicle Decorator Eagle of Valor, 100,000 Silver Lions, and 7 days of premium account access. Of course, that's for new players and anyone coming back after at least six months. And also, don't forget about the free festive decals available until the end of January. Thanks again to War Thunder for sponsoring the video. This time, I'll see you guys. Thank you to all the patrons this month who receive early access to videos. In particular, thank you, Baby Cal, Nick Steffel, Q Brute, Rafao, Outgone Regions, Quiet Guy, Torvalved, Ambient Cyan, Robert Kaleno, James Levy, Luke78776, Chewy Shoot, The Watcher, Brova, Robert, and Jamie.